What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a really special guest in the studio. Listen, this man is up here for a big festival this weekend. We're going to talk about that shortly, but you see this man here? He's a recording artist, a producer, a songwriter. You can hear him rap, you hear him sing, you hear him DJ, you hear him do everything under the sun. This man's catalog is so crazy. Eight albums plus and counting. You know we have in the building today, we have Conscience Kandan in the building today. What's going on, big boss? What's going on, fam? What you doing? We're good, you're good? I know my rap. Huh? I never know my rap, but oh, you don't know. We're, we're going to talk. Hold on. I got something for you. Don't <laughs> no, worry. No, 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 I can't deny. I know you have some kind of receipt once you say that. Away. Yeah. But anyway, we're going. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Usually, we like to take it from beginning. But before we even get there, I know right now, we're just coming out of the pandemic. All right? Yeah. For the past, say, three years. Yeah. How did the pandemic treat you in particular? Rough, man. Mm -hmm. Just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, because... Is a thing where you never did expect it. People never feel it real. That's the first thing. Yeah. And by the time we realize how it real is like it, it the shocking moment, you know what I mean? Everything shut down. We never see the world like this yet. So just like when plot, everybody see me, it, it hit me, man. When you first heard about it, how long did you think, okay, we're we're gonna be down for? Um Well, again, first of all, me never believe none. Yeah. So when my dad Jamaica and them say airport shut down, you know, me, I say, yeah. okay, this thing looks serious. And them say, you can't go out the road. Yeah. We just say, all right, two weeks, three weeks. You know what I mean? That's that's maximum. Because we, that, we look upon it as a little relief, too. You know what I mean? For Time the schedule down. get, you know what I mean? Yeah, you get what I say? Yeah. And then it, we realize, say, now nah, open up back. And then they must show people are dead off more. And we just say, oh, what is this? And at <laughs> what point did you really realize, say, okay, this is... This doesn't seem to be going away. Was it at the six months mark, the four months? Where did this like, okay, come on now. You guys are ODing with this thing. But a month and a half yeah. in. Must mm -hmm. start really take it serious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I remember when I first heard about it, I said, okay, a couple weeks. Yeah. Six weeks at the most. Some people were telling me two, three, four, or five months. I said, are you crazy, boss? Yeah. Boss. And it turned into three years. Damn, three years, though. When we see people start mash up one another for toilet paper, I remember that because them go to a little phase yeah. where everybody I get crazy for toilet paper. We say this no look right, then you know, something I go on here. It's something. And then you know we see the whole world start shut down and yeah. it reach or reach right our doorstep too. Then we say all right, mm -hmm. yeah, it did. What did you learn about yourself in that that quiet time? Because that's the only thing I could quiet, call it quiet. Because you're always on the go, on the move. What did you learn specifically about yourself? Something you probably might have me learned. Known Firstly, me learned say, as an individual way, growing up, I would have said me as an introvert. Me really learned, say, me love people. Mm -hmm. Me learned that me love people because I start to miss the presence of people. Mm -hmm. And not just my immediate so, um, people like family and everything. You, know, you, you get that early, you miss your family early. But me as a man where me used to missing my family. Mm -hmm. Come here tour. But me start realizing hey, this artist thing has become somewhat of a jug to me. When me need people. So when you can't reach out and touch people, me start feeling it. Yeah. And it start work. I made a certain way. I start think too much, overthink. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And certain situations where did need for fixing in my life. We start dive down in them and start think too much, too much alone time. And mm -hmm. yeah, people, people important, man. For sure. Especially as you said, your job is yeah. to be in front of people. Right. When people are going out to party, that's when you're going to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What was the best thing about the pandemic for you? Music. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm locked down in my studio mm -hmm. at Jamaica. So, you know, we had about 70 odd song, 80 song. Yeah. Just diving into music. Yeah. It was really the music because I know you're an artist that music and visuals for you go hand in hand. Yeah. From I mean from beginning your first your first breakout song winner, music video. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pandemic's cool. I wanna take it to the beginning now. I know you grew up in Dwayne Park. Yeah. How what was it like growing up back then? Well, you can start it before that to me, grew up in an upper camp. 
Kingston, that... Jamaica. Okay. Yeah, so this one now, yeah, as a little youth, a baby, you know, that are the safest place in a Kingston. So, you know, say, um, the lifestyle is one type of lifestyle, and then move by Sherlock, about 2000 when the war hot. <laughs> So you move around the safest place in a Kingston. To the to the, you, you, you wake up and grow up now. When Kana beat on a soldier train. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um it basically start out in uh, you know, upper camp. Father was a soldier. And the lifestyle, it, it was not strict nothing. Me, me hate um authority. Because I see authority so much everywhere. But usually if your parents are in the army and stuff like that, that's usually discipline and authority is first and foremost yeah. in most people's lives at that time. You no, know, no, it have the opposite effect for me. Most of my friends in the upper camp who not turn soldier mm-hmm. in a, some kind of um, military or some, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But me, the, them time, it just made me despise authority and it did not affect me in a school too. Eh? Mm-hmm. I don't want to call them and sir and them something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it affect me rough, man, mm-hmm. as I look at you. So what were you, okay, because you said father's father's a soldier. So what were you actually doing in upper camp at that time there? Be a little youth. Mm-hmm. You know, run up and down, all about, be a foot, and then we start go to school, and, you know, we start dealing with sports and girl thing and regular life. You know, I mean, it was, you know, you know grow up. The only difference is when you're there at your yard, mm-hmm. you, 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 you don't get the realities of, of life where other people have run at them yard because you're not paying bills. <laughs> you're not paying bills. You know you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Certain type of live it in a day in a upper camp them time there. Mm-hmm. So even when me move out of camp now and then as a as a teenager and dive into the lifestyle at first it was wildness in a, in a first. You know what I mean? Enough different influence going enough different way mm-hmm. where me shouldn't go. And But I think both experiences put together kind of give me a nice Balance in our life, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Were you, were you actually, you, so, were you somewhere before Upper Camp? No. In a belly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you're, back, <laughs> you're basically born in Upper Soja Camp. Soja Pitney, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. And what was your mom into back then also? Um, Them time that she, she they are foreign, cosmetology, she had a little ear thing and, you know what I mean, come a foreign and work for people and them something and send, in, send back our money and, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's a fair thing. And it was just you and Delos at that time there? Me and Delos and my little brother for a little while and then my little brother jump out, mm-hmm. stay with his mother and I just remember at them time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it was three boys. Yeah. Are you guys, were you guys close in age back then? Um, Four years apart, all away. That, that, that's, that's close. Me and my sister, that's what we are, four years. So we share a lot of the same memories and experiences they might remember something that I don't. I might remember something they don't. But yeah. four years gives you a good. That's a good enough. Well, all me remember about Delos is me get enough beaten with uh, in cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then him old enough for when me, when me turn teenager and I turn big man, him still can't take on me girl them and them thing then. So him kind of rough me up yeah. as a little youth and show me how life really work. You know what I mean and. And then when me become a big man and him a big man now, it's like I just two two big man apart and you know, little brother, big brother vibes, you know. But that's how you have to go through that at yeah. first, just to realize, so, okay, now we're at age where we're two big men. Yeah, you understand. Mm-hmm. So okay, so you left camp now, got to Sherlock. Do you remember what it was like the first night in Sherlock? Now this is a totally different world than what you were yeah. used to. Yeah, the very first night, um, that thing when you. Um, we, we, we come out of the house and say we walk around the community. <laughs> see, I will walk go up Sherlock. See, and them call out. There's a bottom Sherlock. Walk, come around doing the drive. Mm-hmm. Waterhouse, no, sorry, Waterhouse drive. Go cross, go on up the ball field. Mm-hmm. I never know. Say the hot ground them the way I walk up. <laughs> you see me walk all around the place and say mm-hmm. we look and I look and see if we see no girl and them thing. Like, Cause you know you're reaching a new place. Yeah, say all right, first thing we girl them there. Yeah. So we up and down and walk around and around and, you know what I mean, some place look grimy, some place look nice. And we just, we just walk and make a walk and come around back easy. Mm-hmm. Then the same night, then the money was right through and shoot up the building. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so I said, oh, I them ball game, you play, all right. 
because clearly you guys are used to guns, but you're not used to yeah. just wild guns. Right. Good, good gun thing, however, we're yeah. used to. Yeah. But as I said, them type of something, you, you wake up now and say, oh, what that and say, oh, mm -hmm. you can't dead. Okay, all right. Different story. Yeah, man, a different ball game I play. There at everything now. So did you start, how old were you when you got to Sherlock? Um, I don't remember. I would have said about two more years left in high school. I left high school when I was 16. Mm -hmm. So about 14. 14 about 13, 13, 13, 14, 14. 14. Yeah. So what was it like now going to school and having to go back to Sherlock at that time? You're now you're in the free world. What was that experience like? And what school were you going to at that time? I said the free world. Them time I go excel, man. But at them time they had niceness to me still because right away when you reach in a place, mm -hmm. you don't know the dog. Them to say, all right, then you tell artists, then we can play ball. Mm -hmm. Then the girl them start take on to it. So it's like, man, I try you, you, you develop your ratings mm -hmm. a certain way. Then me I go excel. I think I'm me alone did I go excel. Um, on the whole road, so me and me just look different from everybody I got school and you know what I mean. We naturally know how to move and stay to yourself when I time to stay to yourself and mm -hmm. not make no, no, no trouble and that are before you know what I mean. You get to know everybody, but have fun because I just the new set of girl. Yeah. I, in doing the part girl now, I just want new set of girl now. You get yeah. the <laughs> yeah. So the girl, that was the 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 real um thing that stand out mm -hmm. in the and, early days. And even you now, get into the area, you look different than a lot of people in the area. Did they try to test you or what was that welcoming party like back then? I wouldn't say we look different because the militancy where we have, it not really show up on our persona. I just situations or we deal with situations. I see mm -hmm. the, we deal with things different from how some man deal with it. But we get tested on a, pl a place named... Vietnam, which is the football field. Mm -hmm. Back so to over, the football field. So over there, so you get a test now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm going to play with Russia and then waste. And so if you are, if you are beat, mm -hmm. you will get exposed over there. So now, so I guess we get the testing up on the basketball court. But now, now street testing never really go on until I'm not going to mention the part of the interview there. But yeah. we don't really get the street testing. Yeah. Yeah. That time they're cool. Oh, no. Girls, I'm Sherlock, you're in the free world doing your stuff yeah. now. What did you think or what do you want to become growing up now? What did you figure, say, okay, I'm after school, this is what I'm going to become? Not one, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Not one thing. Nothing. Like, we left school and I said, all right, um, you know, say, we move, go, go show you a lot now and we pay rent. We live with a granny, you know, but we pay rent, same way. You have to help out. Yeah. So, we do enough little work and I think we actually get accepted to teach us college. But you don't know the money never did if you do that. Mm -hmm. So just try a bag of things, man. Anything my brother get up today and say, I did some other that me I do too. He say, yo, go it on fireman. Mm -hmm. You get up, take fireman test, all that that's something the day we don't go for do. Um if you go if you go do the final day we couldn't give blood car we have tattoo. So I saw we not on the fireman. <laughs> I did some fireman thing done. You know what I mean? Whole part thing, whole part yeah. rangs, whole part different wrong road too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As you would you just I, I try to figure it out. Exploring, figuring out, seeing what works, see what doesn't work. I like this, I don't like this type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. So when did you discover music? When did music enter your life then? Me music actually in my brother life from from the last years in our upper camp. Mm -hmm. And me just a follow him. Go do anything what he might do. Mm -hmm. So, me would have said, I'm an artist from them time then. And me a two artist <laughs> from them time then. You see me? And yeah. it spill over in, when we reach a show like now, then dance all come right away foot. Because we are see it now, we never see this camp. But we are see sound back string up now, we are see Stone Love string up and a play, we are see Roadblock, we are see Baby Sham a drive past, we are see, you know what I mean? The whole of them something we are see no one. We see what, me never used to beat Dex at school and sing. But I book up also on youth at Boston one day and them say, Yeah, we know you a long time, you know, dog used to beat Dex. And I say, You know, I'm a liar. Because if I'm a ball game and girl, yeah. you don't know me from, you don't know me as nothing at yeah. school. So, dance all come right away foot now. So, we start, we start get a little props now as youth, we artists artist mm -hmm. in the community. Because I thought they used to keep dances in Up Park Camp at one time. No, I was too young for that. I, I can't come out of the house. Yeah. 
So, and then by the time I start coming around, I just sports me a deal with that. Girl. Girl. Right. Girl. Yeah. Okay, so then sports was, did you ever think you were going to become like a professional? Football, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So where did that go left for you? Knee injury. Mm-hmm. That's usually the first, it's usually an injury that gets you out of the race. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm kind of I'm kind of glad for that to say that from early because I feel like I would be one of them ball of the way. As I don't mean, recover well from injury. Mm. So I know say it wouldn't it work, would work out. out for me. Yeah. yeah. All right. Delos now he's the one as an artist and stuff. Was he taking it serious at that time or he just like, yo, show you I could DJ, I could do man, this? I could do it. Mm-hmm. The man never really take nothing at all serious. Mm-hmm. He's just a man who just accrues through life. You know what I mean? And I do him thing and if him say, yo, I this I'm dedicated now wherever I'm just still, but in terms I take it serious, like if it not go on him, I go. I never had them vibes. Like one split on him good. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't say, when we realize say, this thing can make real money, then me become this obsessive person now and start getting obsessed over music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who were you listening to back then? Whether artists or sound or what were you listening to where you say, okay, I like this? Everything. Um, like I said, Baby Sham, them, being a man, all right, you name it, from Sizzler to Berries, mm-hmm. from hip hop to R and B to pop to soul, MTV and B we just get cable in you know, at yeah. them time there. So you know MTV, B T live mm-hmm. on them thing there. Sean Paula and Beyonce a, a, a turn over a place like Lil Wayne them just come like everything. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that was your thing. I, Cause I know you sing, you yeah. sing J, you DJ, and sometimes rap. We'll talk about the rapping yeah. a bit. Which one was the first one you attempted to do? Sing J. Sing J. For sure. And I think, no, I like DJ. DJ? Yeah, DJ. Because mm-hmm. one time I swear me, I want bad man DJ. <laughs> Cartel, them bus, and, and, yeah. and do one of them bus, and I idolize them, and then I say, yeah, all right, every, every lyrics are double rhyme and similar, and the voice of you are tough up now. And, mm-hmm. ooh, yo, who for dead look, who for clash? <laughs> yeah, me that in the first half, but mm-hmm. then we get a hit in a Japan now, where kind of curve the direction of, 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 what, of, of where I was going. Okay, so then how did you even get into studios at that time? There, Because you guys obviously say, okay, I'm going to take it serious. And the name of the duo that time was Soldier? Soldier, yes. How did you guys even come up with that then? Soldier. I come from camp. Mm-hmm. And my name is Carlos Soldier. So we say we're well, Soldier. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then Sons of Ja was the, the, <laughs> the like a breakdown feed. Okay. Then um, we start go couple of studio till we end up at cash flow studio over over Corville now. Mm-hmm. Start walk across and link them and book a studio and record or song them. Okay, so at that time cash flow was more of a anybody could go in that's paying for their studio if you're time paying, and do what you want to do. You're paying you're going in. So you missed the whole error of having to stand up at Studio Gate, waiting for somebody to give you an audition before mm-hmm. they let you in studio the um <laughs> gate man is broken up man's hand and all that so you miss all of that you know sir, that's why i'm so lenient with yeah. with evil the, the new youth them nowadays in the music because you see this authority thing when i try to have over them and i try to dictate how them for do them life mm-hmm. me know for a fact that if me mm-hmm. did for audition for say a king jam is i say no matter how i feel my talented and believing in myself mm-hmm. this this um the way i despise authority I know for sure I would not be an artist. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lift it up to a man to say, all right, you're bad, come. If, if for me, it was all about figuring out a way to do it myself. To get in. Yeah. How did you guys even discover Cashflow Studio over there? I don't remember, you know. Mm-hmm. But they were, they were pretty popular. Them alone have studio like, you know, them either either them time still, them time there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that was just, I, I can't recall the, the whole story of how I figured out Cash flow studio. Because how I even came across you, uh, Neil from Cash Flow, yeah. he sent me an envelope with your. Did you guys put out a mixtape that time with Winner on it? Quite a number of mixtapes. Okay. Yeah. That time he sent me an envelope with Winner, some headshots. And at that time, you guys had different. It was Conscience and Delos, but you still kind of had the soldier attached to it a bit at that time there yeah, also. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. So how did you guys even come up with this hit that connected in Japan? 
I don't know. Them time, as we say, we try everything. Mm -hmm. um, today, we're a hardcore DJ. Mm -hmm. If we stand up wrong to Rasta, we're a Rasta. If we, <laughs> so, every minute, from our music, we do it. Yeah. All of that, really and truly, all of that come from just the, the fact that we love music as fans. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And whenever I have direction for say, all right, you look like this, so you for sing, sing some song like this, and everything was trial and error. So, we just have try things and I do things. Mm -hmm. And we believe in our good music, so. Regular around the place to Fifth Element and Chuck Fender and mm -hmm. them. Man. So, this was the 04, 05-ish yeah. time here. Yeah, so whatever around the place, we you know that we can do that. And by the time we do a CD and come here and drop it on the block, it has been on the block non-stop. Mm. So we would start the reggae, we start the dance hall, and then we just we just get a reggae rhythm one day and we just tear it. And it was history. I mean, I know how it reached Japan. Yeah. Because you even did an album an exclusive album, you guys, for Soldier, for Japan. Yeah, was, was that after. the one Luciano was on? I think so, yeah. Uh, how did that do for you You're guys? You're bad woman right woman. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. how did, so how did the album and stuff do for you guys? Did you guys start flying to Japan? From the single. Actually, the single prompted the first tour. Mm -hmm. From a tour? Yeah, we'll do a, yeah. I'll do a one-month tour mm -hmm. from the single alone. Cause you want to know some dope plates start coming mm. and we realize say yo dope plate I want them time now go four bills them time they want and them time they may work mm -hmm. and my brother are working my security and me are working you know, in a lab what do you mean a lab a lab like I mean that's easy man <laughs> now working in a lab my friend <laughs> you see when I say I do everything good yeah. and bad yeah when I get into it, you right. see? So, me I work in a lab, but me I get called and I say, yo, dub plate and mm -hmm. dub plate of four bills and you pay for a month of three bills. We are current, when you, when you really so, so clearly. My man just done it work, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I say, yo, music, try to mm -hmm. figure out how to get some more four bills after this. Mm -hmm. So, that, that interesting interest from the Japanese sound, them, make what, um, we end up reach a Japan. My brother there online one day and a man emailed him and say, yo, I want to do a tour. Mm -hmm. And actually, he wasn't a security. He was a, was a, a control, a, 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 a IT person at Sportsmax. We don't know how him get in this and either. But in the round there, Sportsmax yeah. around control room. And so he ended up on the internet. Mm -hmm. And yeah. At that time, there, so you guys did the tour, everything came back. Because I think it was only one album you guys put out as Soldier. Right. Okay. That was 05. So then it was 05. Eight, three years after that is when you got to break with Winner. Winner. Do you guys, it's hard to break up as brothers, but what happened to Soldier at that time where you now, you're conscious, conscience at that time? Yeah. We actually did two albums because we end up doing our next, the first tour of Europe too. A and Europe then one. do an album with Air Vibration them in a Europe. Mm. Seeing so we do, we do an album together in a Japan and one together in a Europe. Two of them go great. Um, but then we just reach, we just return to Jamaica and we just way more obsessed over it than him. And him just a laid back out mm -hmm. and me just get up every day and try max out, max out, max out the day. It's mm -hmm. me and so we end up deciding to say, all right, solo career and we still have to do soldier work because we still have song ready for go, to go up our album. Zine, but then we not forward now, recession come, which is an important part of it. Yeah. Recession, you shake up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw the song name Winner come out. Yeah, because, yeah, you're right. 08 was when everything crashed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I came out. But this was actually for cash flow now. So you yeah. were no longer just going and recording to your stuff. Yeah. You're now connecting as a artist. Say, okay, cash flow said, come in, come record. Right. Why did they decide to actually link with you? Say, okay, I see what you guys are doing. Let's do something else over here. I wouldn't say it was a case like that. I think we were, we were just friends them time. They were up and down. Like, we pushed down people at gate for get them in for play. Mm. <laughs> them type of up and down. I carry with poetry, mm. carry Neil Poach, or something. We were just bridging them time there. And nobody never think, say, yo, the thing I got bigger. We never, never aspire for that, really. Man, just I get up every day and I do music. And I say, what's next? You just wanted to make sure you could collect your four bills. Four bills with double it, money. Yeah. And yeah, I think as far as the door, right? So you know, really, mm -hmm. I think, you know, that was the vision for me at least. Me, I, you know, I mean, them time I saw me I pray. Mm -hmm. So then now, winner came out and took off. Yeah. How did you know winner really started to bubble in the streets now? Because I was there. 
Mm-hmm. So we are carrot go everywhere. Um, the CD where you probably get same cash flow of the the printer. I mean, left Sherlock go over there go sit down and print the CD them. You know what I mean? We have a bridge named Pablo. Mm-hmm. I think Pablo used to manage cash flow. He used to help with him get him show where a place where we can go buy a CD. We we'll buy a CD, print up CD, and we we'll literally I take CD and I put it in a people and so. So I know I see first and say that it I get big. Some selector start play it all about. People start link with a dub plate now in Jamaica. So I know say thing I get real. Okay, so at that time you were doing more Japanese and European sound dub right. plate at that time there. Got I wrote me out of hide money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who was the first big song that you did a dub for and you actually said, Okay, now we're getting some uh, for winner? Mm-hmm. I don't know, you know. Yeah. I think I can I can recall, but I know so the first time I hear it on radio mm-hmm. was um no that's not the first time. But the biggest time I hear it on radio was Nicky Z them in the morning. Okay. Nicky Z really send it to a radio and then everybody say, Alright, mm-hmm. this is it, you know. But yeah. in terms of the biggest sound, yeah. remember one fully loaded it play every every sound play and, yeah. if, and if it play se- I'd play about seventeen time, uh half of that time they are dub play. Mm-hmm. So man I cut the dub for kill that sound and then he that sound and kill him back with that Counteraction and the counter <laughs> yeah. counteraction and, and so the counter. So falling in love with dub play yeah. thing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah man. And sound sound the sound man them them definitely take that song to a next level man. Yeah. Nick is he blast it on the radio, Kurt Riley them mm-hmm. and then the selector them them interested in that really push it through the through the roof. Mm-hmm. At that time there, because I know everything is bubbling now. Before we even get too far in the conversation, your name, Conscience. How did you come up with that name and even the spelling of the name? My brother and him friend him. Mm-hmm. Because it, it was a time where if I make no move, me one, I'd have the reasoning behind it. Mm. So I guess I saw the name come, Conscience. And me, me kind of switch up the, the spelling. Okay, so you... They said conscience as in conscience, conscience. But yeah. you said, okay, artist-wise, now I got to fix it up so it looks. Yeah. yeah. That way there. All right. Mm. Cool. Got the name. Everything is bubbling. So then now Winner came out. Did you start to travel when that came out? Or what was your next moves at that time there? Winner came out and then Jamaica started falling in love. It, was not, it wasn't a Sherlock doing the park, Spanish town thing, because there was a, a station named Music Plus. Music plus, I, I, you know, them side I really put more doing the park, Kingston 20, and RE TV I played now, I spread across the island. Hype TV, them I spread across the island. Mm-hmm. And Jamaica start falling in love with this song now to play on the radio. They, they selected them. Yes, hey, you know what, crazy? Mm-hmm. Just how oh, I really this to you now, mm-hmm. I show with the, the difference in our music now because. So much stages I sang I forgot you forget big them time they know <laughs> just post it. Post it on Instagram yeah. and you're, so it's you're like black. you miss the whole build up there just happened tomorrow and that's why them it kinda not last as long, I guess. So you missed the the King Jam is waiting at a gate forty five. You missed that. that era there. Yeah. But then you had an era where you still had to work a record. It was hard to work because mm-hmm. there was no big name for fit carry your going station and say, Yo, I him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Mm. At that point there. Early in your career, a name that's almost, even to this day, that's always in the same space with you would be Charlie Black. Yeah. Okay. When did Charlie Black, you actually notice him? Because it's almost like from you did Winner and he put out um, Riches here. Yes. Yeah. It was almost like you guys did were inexplicably linked at that time there for some strange reason. Yeah. We don't know. Me, me, me always feel like, by right, I should have bad mind Charlie Blacks and say, hey, man, hey, I would have boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, but then, when we, from the winner, mm-hmm. because winner create this money segment now where everybody say, oh, money song, money song. Charlie Blacks have been a rich this year. Sir, and he say, all right, you feel your bad. I'm mm-hmm. going to be stinking rich. Cartel say, oh, them boy, what they say do? Me no bad rich. Mm-hmm. What me not? So it's like, mm-hmm. but when you start going to dance them now, mm-hmm. It hard for me to feel bad because how the, the, we always see the money segment really I take the dance hall and create a nice, you know what I mean, a nice energy in our dance, which wasn't there before. There wasn't a slow hip-hop sound in nothing. And 
there wasn't no song where really a highlight. What? Money vibes and you know, so at that kind of made me say, alright, I'm not gonna try to bust off Charlie Ed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Because if you look and again, it's not until you really pay close attention. Yeah. Where it's like you guys been almost like running mates from the beginning of each show. He, you know, okay, he's coming from so. For real. Yeah. yeah, he's coming from so. You're coming from camp, but then turn into artist. But from jump yeah. till I mean today, twenty twenty three, you guys are still like this, bro. Yeah, yeah. You got the broke half your back. You got party animal. It's like, yeah, for real. But yo, what kind of history on Mondays? No, man, I must start pre this thing. Are different now, you know. So even when me go so woman, I say all right. Mm-hmm. Girl above with Charlie said, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you? And them something there. And for real, like, yeah. the different, the transitions is like, me I, start, me I look into it and see if it really that, that's similar. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. an interesting point. Yeah. Mm. Russia now. When did you start linking with Russia? Just their studio one day. They are Natural Bridge studio at them time now. Mm-hmm. I'm start linking with, with Mark Pinnock and Natural Bridge. A Russian and a next white you just come in and say, yo, I'm ever ready, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, your voice and everything. And them telling me just have, if you read them bad, song. Mm-hmm. Vice in. So that's how we link with Russian and then we start doing more and more songs together. What was the first song that you you did with Russian at that time? Eh? A song where say, Woman I Go Kill Me. It never bust. Got you. But it's at the, the same rhythm where, where Carter say, Um. Um. I, no, I make no another one there. Eh? Mm-hmm. I don't remember, but yeah. the cartel upon the rhythm did boss and my song is just nice. Mm-hmm. Never boss. Was Russian Russian at that time there or he was on the come up at also? On the come up? Mm-hmm. Same personality though. <laughs> Stink. <laughs> yeah, same yeah. personality. And that's why me and him are right still mm-hmm. because, you know, like it's not a youth where him success make him start act a different way. Anybody where feel like him act a way, mm-hmm. same used to act. That's just him. him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So you guys think there's so the first hit that you got with Russia would have been the one with you and Jay Capri? No. Which one Sing was the first? Sing a song with him, This Means Money. Yes. You know me, I'm Mahan- moving that scratch me. Got hit. Mm. So you're still in your money thing at money, that time. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So then now you have two under your belt. And remember, you didn't come out of the Alliance, Gaza. Yeah. None of these places here. You weren't really from Portmore Wood where all the artists were busting and all that. So then now you on your own. How did the industry start to treat you as this anomaly where you just, like, who are you? Where do you come from? They didn't get a chance to. Mm-hmm. They never get a chance to address me until I stand up firm. Because I know them would have pushed me down. Them could have fight me. <laughs> I know them would have shit me down. Yeah. Them could have fight. What are we talking about this, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we just recently talked about this one there. And it's a case where my career was so personal with people. Like, mm. it was so my CD into your hand. Me, take the microphone and sing on the sound. Mm-hmm. Me, you know what I mean? Me, hug up one girl tight, makes you feel like she had the only girl in the world. Take a picture with it. Like, it was so personal with people mm-hmm. that by the time me have hits for backup, the persona, it was too late for you to push me aside. Mm. When done, they already have to look for me now. Because at that time there, you would... By you're on your second big song, you were on the juggling because juggling was still big at that time. There, mm-hmm. you would have been either the number one song on the juggling or two or three. You weren't going down to four or five. Right, you're always in the mix of that juggling there. Right, so you had to make sure that you're gonna stand up firm in the juggling. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially in the climate where war are going, and we just didn't have war with nobody. Mm-hmm. It kind of tough. It was kind of tough to stay relevant. So if I never have that approach where I go direct to people, direct to to to, to the audience, it would work. Did you know that's what you had to do or just worked out that way? It just nice because you, you remember now, when you go direct to people, you get the perks of going direct to people. Mm. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was that was kind of a whole fun thing. I mean, hire my friend them. I always I think the same way. We love the, the, the same energy. We professional at mm-hmm. the same time. So it wasn't this big playground coming to operate. So, so if you have come power around me, you know, say work serious and then we we'll play. Yeah. Yeah. Let's finish our work. Then we'll get to the fun. Yeah. Management. Did you have management when you first came out? Um. 
for a time, for a few months, Natural Bridge, Mark Pinnock. Okay. Um, this was when Winner was an underground song, and his work, him, theme work helped put, put Winner to, the, to where it is to. Mm-hmm. Um, him connect Nicky Z, him connect um, Futa Hype, Kurt Riley, the selector them, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Him connect them people and say, you know, hear this, and call them around and say, you know, hear this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas me now, I just the street. I mean, I go direct the street, Gary Chucks, um, Little Richie, and them man, they don't have town. I just, they, me, I do that, and him, I do, do, do that. So the whole thing kind of come together and make that song the boss. Okay, so there was Natural Bridge. You're still, you were still in Sherlock at this time here? No. You weren't in Sherlock at no. this time here? I'm dead every day, but them time yeah. I don't live there. Yeah. Did you try to connect with Baby Sham at that time when you're either before you you broke or when you broke? No. How come? But I don't know, Sham was a, was a mysterious man them time then. And then, remember I said, while, while being in Sherlock and being, you know, the, the local artist, mm-hmm. Sham don't really live at Dwayne Park or live at, I don't remember if he live in Jamaica, but we, you hardly see the man. So we see him mm-hmm. and try to get at him, call me up and one, one dance, one stone love party one time. Um, we talk to him one time and say, oh, yeah, see, I see there. Mm-hmm. Um, played for Dave, make me hear him. say, yeah, man, them time of Dave sit down right there. So. <laughs> and you know what I mean? I would start praying, man, and say, yo, the man look like Dave here and Dave right there. So mm-hmm. come, we don't know what Dave, to this day, we don't know him look like. Was. So, but a man say, yo, I did mm-hmm. that you write this man, right? you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So Sham was a mysterious person for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But we just look up to Sham and we say, I Sham that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where say his picture was on the wall on the building and yeah. stuff there at that time. Yeah. Right? Because he's a representative of Sherlock. Yeah, man. Time, and right? and I think interact interacting with people and hear all them how people would have discussed Sham mm-hmm. kind of helped prepare me to fit. For real life too, because you know they that man and a man say, "Hey, you see the boy the name Sham." But if Sham drive past right now, DJ. Mm. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it show me as some YouTube outside and it show me how people mindset is with artists and you can't really please everybody and you can't win. The good thing with it is you seem to be collecting all of these lessons yep. as you go through, even if it wasn't consciously. It was something that you knew, okay, let me put this together in a box. I'll put it yeah. in my pocket for night. Okay. Yeah, put it in your yeah. pocket. I think that's the most important part. Mm-hmm. Put it in your pocket, car. Yeah. When it, it come around, and then subconsciously, yeah, I got some, this look familiar. So, so when everybody has say, I saw you for real, I really saw you for real. Yeah. You know, so them not with you for real. Mm-hmm. Or you know, say, I saw them stay them with you. You know what I mean? So you kind of decipher information. You know how process. to swim with sharks. Right. You know what I mean? Doing yourself. So, who was the next manager after um, Natural Bridge? Next manager, I'm a, I am a friend. Them, mm-hmm. I am a two friend. Them and say, I want a manager you now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we just start turn up a place from them time then. And that's when you came up with the subconscious label, or that was later. That right? was yeah, around the same time we mm-hmm. launched a label. Mm-hmm. Have your stuff. I know you guys did Japan and Europe already. Yeah. Now you have winner and you're a solo. Where was the first place you went as conscious? Damn. I think New York mm-hmm. was the first um, big show. I'm do. Ari Jamboree. Big up Ari Jamboree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ari Jamboree was big back then. Huge. It was like, it was a predecessor predecessor to Grooving in the Park Grooving at that time. Park, like that. Yeah. It's the same park, right? Or no? Yeah, in, in Queens, that's the same yeah. park. Right? Mm-hmm. Off of Merrick Boulevard there. Right. Yeah. And what was the reception like the first time in the States? Now, yeah, it was cool in Japan. It's cool in Europe. But now you're in the core audience this outside the of league. the core. Yeah, this is the big league. Yeah. And it, it came off just as, as you would think it would in a big league. You, cho- you feel like you're ready, you're not ready. But you sang big, and mm-hmm. so you get to it. Mm. That's basically what happened. Yeah. Mm. Where did you learn to perform? YouTube. Yeah. King Shango and Bujo. What was it about those two in particular? Um, firstly, who them, who them people would say are performers, I never feel like I sing the type of music where if you can match them type of performing there. Mm-hmm. So you don't look upon Beanie, you don't look upon Ellie. Beanie, they just look like a god. So film type of performing is a, being a performance stem from the love of people have film. Mm-hmm. So, 
is not a thing where anybody can just go perform like Beanie. It's a, lo- a special love in OBI people. Him. See, in LA, I go flick and climb and I, I mean, I do that. <laughs> so it's like we start, we start look to 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 ways how to improve my performance and how to interact with the crowd and how to, um, and practice too. Mm-hmm. We do R- RJR Road Show, all sorts of school tour and you try this and it work and you try that and it work and you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You go there, so you go flop. You go there, so you go, you go shell it. You, go there, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I realize it's a craft and I just, you know, your song bad and people them see you. Was it hard being a single performer where you can no longer hide on the stage, if you understand what I mean? If it's you and Dallas are on stage doing your thing, you could hide, but now it's strictly you. How was it to really absorb something like that? Yeah, okay, I couldn't hide because Delos is more of an introvert too. <laughs> so I'm too introvert that yeah. on the stage, a, a whole of vibe. It's just a whole of vibe them time there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, touring in Europe from a young age, mm-hmm. and you feel like you have it. When you come to Jamaica now and you do a little show and it's a totally different thing because them, them, them accept music different, them mm-hmm. consume music different. Europe want you sing it out. Jamaica, they want you chop it and yeah. style it up. And talk in between mm-hmm. and jar your song, them like select and mm-hmm. So like, I bet it's about words. I've just figured it out mm-hmm. them time then. They're doing your stuff now. Is this when you started to work on your first album as an individual? Um, I can't remember, remember exact dates, but I so always I believe in a mixtape and album and them something there. So mm-hmm. I always record non-stop. Mm-hmm. So I don't know when the album, first album kick in or when, you know what I mean? We just I do music. Mm-hmm. How did your first album do for you? It really did great. Mm-hmm. Really, really, really did great because it showed people, say, this is one big artist. Mm-hmm. This is not a one it wonder. This is not a one-dimensional artist. Different fan, different type of fans, different people start tap into it now. Yep. There's a whole, at the time, there was a whole category of people where an album them deal with, mm-hmm. different from an artist with a one song. They want to hear your album. Mm-hmm. And I end up bringing them people close to me and they with me till, till, till this day, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From then, I know early in your career, you connected with um, Taurus Riley. Yeah. And did the song Good Girl. Yeah. How did that come about? Taurus know everything thing from cause Taurus used to power at Brook Valley more while. Mm. So Taurus know everything thing from oh we at in a Kingston twenty. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I hear the thing them. But them time the Taurus, we are listening to Taurus part ends. Cause there was a, a little segment where we nearly rust, you know. <laughs> you see you know, when Sizzler nearly rust me and all my friend never that. Listen, just we're going to get back to this, but listen, <laughs> let's talk about that Sizzler. That Sizzler Kilpatan. Hey, people that... understand the influence of them on the dog. There what? was a whole time when uh, I used to go Excelsior mm-hmm. and I used to have a dog where he come to school with Caveman mixtape. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't know Cave, who, who, of no Caveman mixtape, them Sizzler has a sing hundreds of songs. A man know them by heart and mm-hmm. a whole seal and stop coming here and Couple man rust for real, couple man kinda rust. But I think girl thing saved me from rust. I think. <laughs> that think, seems to be a recurring thing. Yeah, theme. yeah. Cause yeah. even though my thing, I, feel, my thing, I get crazy and you know what I mean? I will all the seeds certain way I eat veggie chunks and thing. <laughs> my thing still have to abs up and, too. and stay a certain way. Cause yeah. we have to see the girl, man. Yeah. have to see it. You know what I mean? Crazy yet. Because that time. Boss, the whole hey, of us nearly rest him. Listen, time. people don't understand it. That was a shift in the actual culture. Right. When those, when SZA combined with Kilpatan came together and that power there. Listen, nowadays when people talk about influence of artists and mm-hmm. I, just, I like to leave the, com- stay far from the conversation because I know, I see for myself, SZA them influence. I see for myself, I'm a name, I'm a name on the wall, Bounty Killer influence. Mm-hmm. If we would have internet for show them something there, everything we are going now look like joke thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But someone really try to argue with people about that because I leave it and them never leave it there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You but know yeah. you know what it is, so you're not trying to convince anybody what it is. Yeah, so Sizzla did a rass with you for a while. I be a Sizzla where I listen and a, and a rass out and man put on gun and, <laughs> and I try to hold the seal and <laughs> see me well, yeah. be a veggie chunks and reasoning different and you know what I mean long conversations and talking about life and them things so 
Taurus Riley album 15 now where I listen to I think a Parables. Yes. Where I beat yes. Parables. So I think when me get out you know, with win, I'm a start bus. Me say when me Taurus in our shoe store. Mm-hmm. I think I think I mean if I'm not mistaken, a Kurt Riley made a part and him says Taurus Riley and Taurus, I want to know him man. Hey, you know which song of my song? Mm-hmm. And him sing. I don't remember which song him say a theme song, but the song where him sing it wasn't a song where boss. So I saw me know now say He's into him know the know. thing them. I said, all right, yeah man, big up. Mm-hmm. And he just up and said, Russian called me one night and I said, yo, hear this. Yeah. Come in the studio, I got the studio, Taurus. Good girl gone bad. History. Mm-hmm. How did that do for you now that when that song came out? Because remember you have Winner, Han Migla, Scratchman, all that's over there, you know. Now yeah. you're gone, good girl. How did that do for you, and how did they start to really look at your career at that time there? That song, there, along with two other songs, along with one other song, I should say, make me a big artist in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And it made me a headliner in a Europe. A headliner? Yeah. It's, that's when we start headline shows now. Like, mm-hmm. without Simba Fana Festival, I can't be the headliner. Because it add a dimension to my show where... Like most people don't know, oh, you go to the show and you enjoy the show, but you don't really understand how a show constructed. Mm-hmm. Um, it have the high points and your mellow down and high. What Good Girl Gone Bad do, it give me a peak in the middle of my show. I could have put it in the middle mm-hmm. for lift up at the show again and still not sing my biggest song yet. So it kind of spread out my, my delivery away. And it, mm-hmm. Yeah, so that song there was a real, a real um, uplifter for me. When was the first time you and Taurus actually got to perform that song live now? I think it was at one of him show him keep uh, the free show him keep on at Christmas. Mm-hmm. Emancipation Park. I think that was the first time. And what was the reception like? Crazy for the- man. Them song, that song they run yeah. Jamaica for a while, man. Of course. Mm-hmm. And what a lot of people don't realize is back then, a lot of shows were keeping back yeah. then. You know what I mean? It wasn't just, okay, you record over there, I record. Shows. You would leave from... This show, you have three, three shows for the night. Show for your night, yeah, for your do. Yeah. yeah. And that's how artists were working. Oh, I'm coming from Ochi. We have to go with St. Anne's. Yeah, Something in Portmore. Okay, we're going to end off in Kingston. Mm. You know what I mean? That time they're moving good and everything. So what was your next hit after Good Girl? Because you were saying it was two songs in particular. What was the second song? The, the next, the, what, what you would consider the next hit, Gala Bubble. And again, you see how it's like, okay, you did your money. Now we're going to... Big people vibes, Rasta thing. <laughs> no, money. Yeah. Rasta. Now your favorite Big people music. Gyal. Go for your them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was Russian again, I think it was? No, that was me. I'm a producer near Mark Izzy. So that was a sub on your label at that yeah. time there? Because I remember when, till this day, that song plays. When you want to start off the, the girl segment, that's one of the songs they yeah. start off with. Mm-hmm. I want to go to them. That I mean, have your label there, Subconscious. When did you decide to actually start bringing in other artists? Friend thing. Um, I never, I wouldn't say at the time, I was looking at signing artists as business. Mm-hmm. I just said I have some artists, I'm a part of them, and I'm a friend. Mm-hmm. And I said, we don't invest time and money. And I actually want to see them youth win. So why not sign them and make it official? And child and error, I feel like it, was, it, it never did happen that way still. Mm-hmm. I feel like I should have learned more. I should have made myself focus on myself some more at the time first. Because you were then probably get to a level. What, about five this, years in yeah. at this time? You're, you're fresh. Yeah. yeah. Never have the power to mm-hmm. do that yet. Mm-hmm. But I just friending and I care them everywhere. So I might as well. And who who was around you at that time, the artist was? Um, there was only at the time I one main artist, Dario. Yes, I forgot Dario was part of the camp. Yeah, yes, man, bro. Dario was the artist where I just my dog and up and down and he ma, he not really an open show, but me I call him out for performing. Now that you say that, your camp, for some strange reason again, all you guys had one name. It was always Delos, Dario, Conscience, then Massacre came. Everybody was just one name. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I saw who have been the man, Bounty Killer, 
Oh, yeah, I'm going to get away as I know. Yeah. Everything was just one name. Mm. It wasn't Conscience Man or anything. It was all <laughs> yeah. one. Conscience Man. Like that. No, I know that. Mm. Conscience Hype Bar, whatever. It was It was all, all of you guys had one name at yeah. the time. I mean, when did you link with Massacre? This is long after. Mm-hmm. Um, conscience became Conscience. And, and I was conscious for a good number of years. Mm-hmm. Link with Kortad, yes. Ramesh, and I said, I go do a shoe line. Yes. Which was a great, great, great experience. I mean, I like, mm-hmm. um, do a shoe line, and, and it was a vibe. It was a real vibe. Mm-hmm. But that, that's a part of my, my, my story, I'm proud of that whole thing there. The shoe, because remember, that's merch, you know, but that's merch to a whole that's different product. Level. That's another mer- product. You know what? Talking about it, you're right. Merch would be a t-shirt, right. this and that. But a shoes? Yeah, I would never do, I wouldn't do it again, though. I wouldn't mess with shoes again. How come? It's it's a complex thing, man. Like, I don't know, you just get some little thing and it's a complex thing. Product, um, to make sure the product, them up to standard and Korea for flag or China and go live there and for a little while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crazy thing, but we love yeah. it same way and we love the store and everything. At the time, Massacre, Link, Koretad and I, I want to work with Koretad. So he must show, him up, show me this artist here and I say, yo, that, oh, he never, he never feel like, say, my artist and me have at the time match me with aggression. Because mm. Corey Todd is a visionary, you know? he match a creator and kingdom, you know? Yeah. You see? So he must look at it and I say, yo, see the artist them. But my artist them just, they must happy and spoil on the business. They left the studio and gone up and tour and no song yeah. advice and... Them vibes. Like, I'm my brother, them, them man, they just want to burn up some weed and all the vibes with some girl and chill. We make sure him that all right and him good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, he must say, yo, you're the artist, yeah. He play me massacre. I don't want to tell him that. I try to remember if I did sold from mm-hmm. Jump. From Jump. Um, I think he play me one song where massacre did have a, a bounty killer sample in it. I mean, I mean that's the lyrical, for mm-hmm. sure. But I never really, me can't say I was sold from Jump. Mm-hmm. I went to meet him now, and him found out the studio now. Mm-hmm. And that's when I start realizing that you is it. Because I know one of the projects you guys worked on, you hosted his mixtape. Yeah, my first mixtape I would drop on me, Enjoy It to yeah. the World, and crazy. Mm-hmm. crazy. I, mean, I remember how much song, but any amount of song, you hear on the mixtape, him do about three times the amount of that song there. For the mixtape, yeah. so may I say yes? This yeah. is a vibe. And you guys, at the same time, you guys did money. That song, money at yeah, the same time. Yeah, together, money. Yeah, and but, again, visuals. But yeah, man. Yeah, crazy doing stuff with Mas. Was he the only? Him, Dario, and any other artists were in the camp at that time that, quite, that had a name. Quite yeah, man. No, not really had a name. Quite a few, but there was a bunch. But I wouldn't say them have a name, and I, and, and they weren't signed. Okay. They were more endorsed mm-hmm. by the only person who did sign, who actually signed to subconscious was Dario, and then mm-hmm. signed Massacre. Oh, you did say okay, it was official. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Long after. Yeah. Because me did have two managers. Dario come to me and I say, yo, um, my manager them not take film things serious. Mm-hmm. So me read Mister Tim say, you know, me go do dog, me go sign you. So, cause the reason why they not take it serious is because they are not me. Like me not try to earn from you. Mm-hmm. But them man they uh, earn from me. So <laughs> them now nah, I gotta get things serious just mm-hmm. because a friend thing and me introduce everybody. You know what I mean? So maybe if I sign you and it become income for them, or possibly income for them, they will probably take your work more serious. So it's still it's never my, work. A strategy type of sign. Right. Because you didn't sign him to say, okay, this is mine here. No. Strategy if I if they see he's really endorsed by me. Hopefully they'll take it seriously right. and we call If they see room. that this is possible money, yeah. then maybe they'll see this as a business. Mm-hmm. And it still didn't work. It did work. not work. Because conscience work was just too easy. Yeah. <laughs> you just sit down on the phone and ring. I answer it and you just like get booked and I have mm-hmm. them people I want to sign and them people. Like it's just too easy. Mm-hmm. And it, that teach me about even business now where, where when I work with certain labels and certain um, agencies, like I understand things now. Like if it not me, make immediate money, it's hard for you to get people to go to and shine a light on you. That's just the, the way our life set up. That's just how it is. Who was a connection first? Jeremy Hardin or Sharon Burke? Jeremy Hardin. How did he link with Hardin? Um, we don't know if I made a link him. 
I think I made a link him. Mm -hmm. I don't want to tell the line, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But I'll know the link and that was a lesson too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because out of that situation is what came one of your mega, probably one of the biggest songs in your catalog, broke off your back. No. No, because hold on. Well, I'm going to say that because it was at this time here when you're linking with Jeremy was when you had linked with Birch at the same time. So it was in the same time frame. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But I think Broke Off Your Back was 2016. Just yeah. come from tour. Mm -hmm. No, no, I was going to Jamaica. I don't think I had a manager at the time. Okay. No. No, it's possible. It's, it's a possibility to say Jeremy actually introduced me to, to Birch before. I, I, I can't tell you that's not how it mm -hmm. went down. But I don't think that resulted in um, the song. Mm -hmm. Because me and Jeremy split for a while and then we will do some different thing, we go up on tour, come back, and we just depend on the black and studio and Bert send a rhythm. Bert actually send a rhythm from before. Mm -hmm. Um we reach in, we'll have vibe, vice it, and then that was history. He mix it. The thinking behind that, because are you still in your gala bubble them time in that phase yeah, right definitely, there? Definitely, hundred percent. That mm -hmm. was me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the concept behind that song where you said okay you know what this one and did you know that this one is going to be that song yeah you know that if, you know, as an artist you know that every song is that song <laughs> <laughs> and if you approach a song and, and you know, feel that it better you love it like why are you even doing music mm -hmm. if the song no work ultimately people are going to choose hits mm -hmm. but if it no work why are you tell me say you know but I like your song because the people them not like it you, you move on to a next of course but mm -hmm. in my mind every song is going to be a hit when I drop by, you know, some way or the other some region, some place, some right. some right, some part somewhere. Yeah. So forward from Europe now, definitely into the gal them world now because that's that thing start pay different. It show me say people love hype. You God see, all like people are going like them love good music yeah. and nice music and them like message and thing. No, them like the hype of it. Them like yeah. the excitement. That that is what they want. Mm -hmm. So when gal bubble come out now, I get the gal them active, stop sign. Um. Walk and wine, I say Gala Bubble 1, 2, 3, uh, just a drop song on your face. Mm -hmm. All of them songs that it shows that people love the excitement too different from just the little humble you to it. Mm -hmm. I do good music. Yeah. So my thing was just punch them in at them face, keep it going. Broke off your back visuals. Yeah. You decided to make it into like a mini like movie a type movie. of thing. I seen you pose a question. Now I'm going to turn around and ask you this question. Rock off your back when you were dealing with the people and you got the gun. Why did you run when you got the Me gun? I don't know. You don't know who write that script. <laughs> Damien Gill, uh, probably Damien, Damien yeah. probably said for run. I don't know why I run with, and I have the gun. And then yeah. I have a gun, man. So I know said, who the gun out here in a real life? But it work out. Yeah. <laughs> people are trying to give me truck shoes deal. <laughs> so, yeah. Because you could see it wasn't just a jog off. This is, It seemed like, to me, it seemed like you're running for your life. Like, yeah. You're about to man, do something bad to me. I wrote a couple of times, well, we'll do the run, man, for just make sure so it look like me, I act for real, I'm a run. Yeah. But I don't know what, probably whenever, I, I don't know if, they, let's give Damien this credit. He was, he was probably a visionary to know that, you know, I'm going to kill somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. the screen, so I'm run instead with the gun. But he, he do the gun out here, I tell you. He's another one that doesn't really get as much credit as he really deserves. Yeah. Is Damian Gale and Warrior Music. Very creative, very creative youth. And he's a youth where him no need, him no need the biggest budget for create magic. Mm -hmm. If you check all them videos them where, where um where I rack up the real views, them him shoot Gala Bubble too and I'd, if I said to him, I said to him, say, listen, mm -hmm. Gala Bubble, I want you to shoot a party from the opposite direction. Like shoot us getting ready to party, mm -hmm. then shoot us partying. And him just go crazy and start calling me every day. Mm -hmm. And it, we just back and forth with reason until we say, all right, tomorrow, I'll just link up, shoot the video. So it, quick pan him feet, don't need much resources to get things done. Mm -hmm. Great, great director. And he gets it done. Somebody that, all of this is going on. Were you still linking with Massacre this time? Here? Um, Gala Bubble is before Massacre, you know. It was before him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Long before, um... Long after that, now when the thing really solid, 
mm-hmm. as myself link with Massacre and start drop something and it was a headache for try get people to realize hey, about this thing this. Even though you had the clout at that time there to make things happen? I don't think I had the clout. You didn't really you know why? Because my po as I said my power was was more of a me to the people. Mm-hmm. My power never have certain key players on my foot. Like me never have the power that like you get to me I say, mm-hmm. me if not, like me, me, me big to the people, but me not big to the industry. Got you. That make that makes perfect sense. Right. Yeah. Right. So that that, that was it. So it was complex. So me end up have, like me have, me have artists. So me boss me have call them on for my show because me never have enough power to say yo. Make sure you book my artists too. Send them my road. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean. So. And how long were was Masika in the camp? Not for long. Mm-hmm. For about a year, year and a half, little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, that that's a breeze. But I just do the amount of work we do. Is I still the rat. Mm-hmm. I remember one time I was in Africa. Come in, I go on tour of Africa and I work on a song and back and forth. I try to say, Yo, I'm fi- fix a line here, Yo, fix a line here. And I'm just living in the studio. Mm-hmm. Till I end up stop going to my studio for some reason. I'm on the, I'm on the artist around the world. I say, I, I, I start going to a different studio and I see him thing. So I always respect that you have to work ethic. Because even though you guys went through that eruption there, years later I continue to hear you big him up. So yeah. it was never really a. Cause there was yeah he he came out did his interview you came out did your interviews all of those stuff there was he even did a song and all of those stuff there but you still turn around and say you know what die you care about car business is business mm-hmm. yeah and is that you where they link me from before all of that to and tell me say yo Ray both but from me now you will get into that still mm-hmm. but business is business and me love that me you know say him didn't need that for kinda like an artist like that a good percentage of them. Success I gonna come from just lighting fire, mm. lighting the fire. It can't just be like yo easy back and do some song or you, you see some fire light now. They my alkaline, my want it go on, you see me. But I just that, that type of artist there. Me know say me can get to we just doing girl song and it a go work and me go on tour. So you have to do what you have to do, dog. But you're such a warrior. You never got into a because I know there's been situations, personal situations wrong and stuff. But you've never got into a clash with an artist before. No. How come? I don't know. It was one was close for happen with Demarco. There was a little back and forth yes. with Demarco. Me and Demarco are bridging now. Too. And course. them things just show you how life really set up, dog. Like mm. everything of phases and stages, and you can't really have up things in your heart and I walk with it all the days of your life. Mm. It, you know, me and Demarco do songs where they are, where are right. Everything yeah, you're on his album, Melody, the Melody yeah. album and stuff like that. You know yeah, but I mean? that's just the, the nature of the, of the industry that we're in. That's what it was at the time. Mm-hmm. Rough and tough. It's a titan. You yeah. know what I mean? It's a clash yeah. of the titans. The baddest and biggest wins and controls. I think it's bullshit mm-hmm. to some extent, but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Back then, another powerful figure that came into your life at that time there, Sharon Burke. Yeah. How did you connect with Sharon? This was um, after my brother dropped out now. Mm-hmm. Um, Nothing shake up for me. I literally got half mad. You see me? But Sharon Burke did a link me. You know, my DM from get go. She had she a message me on a regular and just, you know, I, sh- I sent her love. And when I start about the show again, she start with some show. And then, I don't know, I don't remember if it, I think she said, she, I think it's, we start work indirectly until we just, she just ended up and manage me. But it just, a, a good leader you need in your corner if you have to work at Jamaica still. Mm-hmm. Because you seem to have linked with all of the right set of players to actually become who you are right yeah. now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you seem to be operating in, you have one foot in with everybody and the other foot is out here by myself doing yeah. my own thing. You know what I mean? Is that something you purposely put or it just worked out that way? No. You just work out, sir. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I mean, I think that's the best way to do it either. I feel like, because me end up in a, in a situation now where like, when me I look for sign artists and me I look like, me don't want an artist one foot in with me. Mm. So it's like, mm. I understand when I put them <laughs> people at show. <laughs> it's tough, but as a youth, when you, it, it's hard for you, for you, say, for you, for you come take over the reins mm. for somebody who has been a do it for themselves unless you come with magic. 
So it is a tough thing for let go as a as a person with have to control things for so long. Mm -hmm. Get it. This is where a lot of things changed. June twenty second, twenty sixteen. Jaja. Mm -hmm. Where were you when you got the Studio. call? Studio. Who called you? Steven. Me call him. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I call him to discuss a uh, song I've been work on. And he said, dog, I want to your brother. And that was it. You said, what, he's just chilling or whatever the case is, you know what I mean? No, but Steven lived across the road from him. So when he said that, I start to feel the darkness. Mm -hmm. You guys had a tight relationship from Jump? Yeah. Did he ever speak to you about certain things he was feeling or the way you guys grew up, people didn't really express certain things? Right, that was the expression there. Not even love when I really show like that. And you know, I mean, it's just a man who always up for me. If you check enough pictures, you see him around this day. So, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, and that's as far as you never sit me down one day and say, Dog, I'm proud of you. Or, you know, what I mean, when I celebrate, over and celebrate, and so because I'm introverted. Yeah, yeah, and you you know, and he knows, and everybody knows what's going on. Cause yeah. That's just the, that's how man a man link. Right. There. You know what I mean? What was the last conversation you had with him? Um, we did we go to Seychelles, go to a show, a big show. Mm -hmm. And I think we just did a discuss that show there and then him did have a birthday party. Him girl lined up on birthday party and that was it. And he asked me for Japan for a money game data. Mm -hmm. That was it. And there was no indication of No. Mm -hmm. You see why you're in a really unique situation, especially coming from Jamaica. We've heard people's parents die, condolence died, Donia, his son died, but we've never, in an open way, discussed suicide. Or even, I can't remember that in the entertainment space, especially dance hall before. I can't remember that in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Even if it happened, I just one of them things the way I feel like it that not coming out of your yard. Mm -hmm. And for everybody who know my brother, people would have more think me would have done that before him. The man I just have float through life and everything good. Mm -hmm. So it's a topic where people need for discuss and expression. Expression is a big topic where we need for desensitize and man can just talk without people I say, all him, I'll be it. I know I'm tear this. Because you don't know. You just don't know. So yo, man up. What's with your bad man? We're not no, me say man, man up all up. the time. You know, there are situations where you need for man up, so you have to. Mm -hmm. But you see, I think when you're venting, and I think when you're somebody come to you with them issue, like, mm -hmm. you have to know, so you, it, you have to kind of be a little sensitive in life. Like, this tough way where I got through life, I make so much man, I do so much, enough man not take them life, but them take other life, and them do other things with them. You know what I mean? Like, it's a real topic where we need where it, it mm -hmm. now it now go figure out this year or next year or the next five years, but we need to make sure so we deal with it. How did you get back to yourself and how long did it really take you to start moving forward again? But when I think my my, my original self, or I gonna ever be that. But in terms of if just if you get up back and say, all right, what I said last year, what I said early last year, the madness kind of toned down. Mm -hmm. And I start focus on myself a little bit. But you were still functioning as in you were going through the motions. You were yeah. still putting out the songs. Going through, you were still seeing You, you put perform. it the right way, going through the motions. Like you, you couldn't tell... Like, you know, fans would have come online and them say, yo, what oh, about the whole conscience? Mm -hmm. Because them not feel the passion in it, them not feel the joy in it, them not feel, you know what I mean, that, that, that energy the way I normally, where I normally put out. And because me just not have that in me. Mm -hmm. You get to me, I say, but me still have to be an artist because of some eat, some kids them eat. So I feel like mid last year is when I start really dive back into the passion of music and start really enjoy being the person I is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
because I think that's when you put out Days of My Life. Yeah. You remember album. when I said? You remember when I said rapping? Yeah. Now, yeah, now you understand. That they call rapping, you know. Okay, yeah, man. Okay, what would you call it then? I don't know. When I said talking, mm-hmm. yeah, when I said talk, that was the idea behind that song. That was mm-hmm. just. How hard was it for you to actually now put this into like a? Cause that song's long, like a five minute song to take your feelings out of your mind, your soul, and everything, and put it here for the world to see. How hard was that for you? Um. It wasn't as hard as just living regular life in front of people. Cause them, when the, by the time the song come out, them see it already. Like them see, my mom broke down in front of everybody, you know. Hmm. I'm gonna take out me hear all of the talking, me hear people are, are, are slander him, me hear people are trying to reason, reason it out, me hear people who say them, say them rate me, and them in, people who have my number. You see me enough people may have problem with no I show that, you know. People who have my number. And them can't link me anymore, I beg me a thing, but instead, mm-hmm. I see them online. I, t- I talk about my situation online. And I talk not to me. talking to you. Them, no, they talk to me online. Got you, got you. <laughs> but they have my number, they call me when they're broken you know, or when mm-hmm. they need something. But when a situation now, they are, so basically, they might use my situation for clout. You know what I mean? They might try to talk about him and like, no. So I'm going to go through it already where it, every, it done outside and in front of everybody already. So then I guess at that point was when you're ready to actually release it, to put it on a record and here's my answer to everything. No, I just know I couldn't do an album and not address it mm-hmm. for myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At that. So do you find music is therapy for you? For sure. Mm-hmm. 100%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That carries you to the places that that nobody would understand because remember there's your regular life and then there's me as the artist which comes with two different problems your personal life generally doesn't seep into your artist's life but they have two different problems that you got to deal with yeah and i guess sometimes in personal life you'll just write it down and sing it in professional life you write it down and sing it, and that releases it out there for you uh, yeah music kind of take you know People say music take you to a place, music kind of take me out of a place. Because mm. when I'm in my brain, <laughs> the worst of me. Yeah. So, like, music kind of give me that moment there when I just come out of that place there. Mm-hmm. I don't know where I'm there, but I just know that there's so, and that is healthy. Were you upset with him when you found out? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And I think I'm more upset with the situation because. We just never get a chance for, for try to fix it. You know what I mean? And I feel like I something where I could have fixed. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I'll never know now. You get what I say? And I think probably that might be one of the hardest parts is what? Just tell me what. I, If it's money, we'll figure it out. It's not. I got enough people. Yo, there are other things in my ear, man. Mm-hmm. And they never know them, man. They don't care about nothing. Like, I buy a car for them. One time I buy a car for my brother. And... And like, I get vexed one day and I said, dog, we just, just buy a car for you, dog. You can't pick up the youth them for me. And the man I said, I tell you to buy a car for me. But <laughs> tell you I need a car. <laughs> you see me? And the man, he's not a materialistic man, even if you go out of your way to do things for him. Or, you know, him just want to make sure say him that are good and, and him just proud. And mm-hmm. him that. What's one advice he gave you that you hold dear to your heart for the rest of your life? I can't recall. Mm-hmm. Just in presence everywhere that my world there. Mm-hmm. And then when we look back on picture, uh, you may look back on some picture now when we're surrounded by pussy. Mm-hmm. And we were looking at the picture and one man a smile. <laughs> and it's so crazy, it's weird. One man just running and spinning off him teeth. Yeah. And I just miss all on to them memories there. It almost seems like after that happened, the veil came off your eyes. Even though you knew how people moved before, but the, ver- the veil really came down. And I think you and yourself, you didn't give a fuck anymore. It's like, listen, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. And if you're going to like it or like it or not, because it is what it is right now. Yeah, it was more of a, I think I always did stay so. But I think after that, I develop a sense of my fuse get shorter. Mm. So it's either you're with me or you're with me. You fuck off. Like I just, that mentality that I have. Because mm-hmm. I don't have no more time. I always, I love nobody. And you know what I mean? All of, when that um, everything else, what did that happen? That was small, just become amplified now. Mm-hmm. My more emotional. If I sit down and talk about this no more longer, I would have ball like 
I just that person that may become no one. Mm-hmm. I just can't bother with, with no energy where it's not supposed to be. Yeah. Mm. I got you know that that um thank you for even I jump I jump out on that topic you know, No, but I that's what yeah. I was gonna say to you. Thank you for even sitting down and talking to me about it. Yeah. You understand? Because I know it's 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 something serious. But it's important though, so yeah. I don't mind. Because you just want to make sure that you could bring mental health awareness right. to anybody else. If this could save somebody else to go through the pain that I went through, hopefully it helps. Yep. You know what I mean? One other situation that you went through, Jay Capri. Yeah. Pull out to my bumper. How did you guys even come up with that song? Russian. Russian. Actually, no, I think no credit for that. Mm-hmm. Russian, I uh, Europe, me I get ready for go. I just be it. I may get ready for go. I want to show Amsterdam to be exact. The mm-hmm. venue was walking distance. So we go walk to the venue. So I saw me get an extra half an hour and chill in my room. Mm-hmm. Him link me. Yo, the artist, said, bro, is my artist. I want to do a song with her, please. I'm sorry. Right. I'm saying it. Yeah. I'm just lucky that my studio did up. Come here, my mobile studio did up. Load the rhythm record, same time I left. Forget about it. Mm-hmm. Cause Russian link me. Like, you have some people in my life when they link me, just <laughs> Russian that. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, and where's his history? Then we meet her after that and realize that she's one of the biggest things where I go come out of Jamaica and I say, wow. Mm-hmm. It was actually two songs, I think, you guys. It was either two or three songs you guys did. We did a few songs. Yeah. But the one, two, I like, two come out. Mm-hmm. Two come out. And she done a monster one with who? Charlie, Charlie Black. Black. <laughs> boy, Charlie. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. mm. just a part of your life. So even when you heard that she passed now, were you close to her at that time, or you just kind of linking it? Um, but not gonna lie, I said I'm a sis, mm-hmm. but where respect concern, respect heavy. My assistant and I was good friends, so we used to see her regularly, mm-hmm. and we got tour Europe and we cross parts and tour in Europe. I'm a see her at work, and I say yo. That girl, yeah, she deal with place that we like. Mm-hmm. Me have some of our half day, I go watch her show one night. She used three songs at work for about 45 minutes. And she woke them and me, I say, Yo, I'm use her as style some man. I say, Yo, hey, me they the pan tour and see Jacob Ray use three mm-hmm. songs and work for 45 minutes. And some boy, me I call on her pan, I don't know if I go open the show. Mm-hmm. And by the time I run out, you know, I call me, you know, what I mean, like, I just a person with my rate and respect. and it just heavy. We just didn't know that that was the next big thing and she was just taken from us. Let's get to a bright spark. This is a super bright spark in your career. The Versus concert with Super Cat, yourself, Sham, Cranium, Burnt and Levy. Mm-hmm. I think Mad Lion might have been on that one there too. Couple up. How did it feel? Because remember, this is now we're just kind of getting out of pandemic where pandemic is still around somewhere. Mm-hmm. How did that feel to perform on a big show like that one now with artist that you respect a man like super cat boss um just being in that element when i like performing it feel like just my perform somewhere mm-hmm. when i go like mm-hmm. but if you see barrington levy and for see super cat and for see you know what i mean sham mm-hmm. and just the way all them rough up the stage i know it, it was a look on westin and people in that stage and i say yeah oh it's sound in there mm-hmm. dexter when dexter run out when tj run out and it's just a nice energy. Mm-hmm. But not being there was nicer than the performance to me. Got you. Because performances, you're going to work. Right. I was going to share it and know I'm my thing. But being there for experience, all of that, mm-hmm. it was great. And it just made me start to say, more I would do, we need this for self. We don't want to be a part of somebody's thing. We want this for self. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Another massive thing that you did, and I don't think you realize how big it was, you being on Arsenio Hall with you and Sean Paul. Yeah. Do you, you realize how massive and great something like that was huge yeah crazy enough sean paul are the only artist who ever called me up on a stage it was um was a song with me and the film album and him go costa rica mm-hmm. and him just a foul and i'm the only big artist ever <laughs> me never opened show for nobody yet me never i'm still never opened the show yeah Said, so come like it, it's still there, zero. <laughs> it's still there, zero. We <laughs> still never open show for nobody yet, for real star. We never get that mentorship there yet, yeah. where I feel like would I know would I be a, a difference maker. 
But you say it's... To up to Sean Vaughn for real. You say it's work all the time. Yeah, performance is performance. I get that. But being on Arsino, how did that feel? Because that's millions upon millions upon millions of people watching that. Yeah, big up Arsino. But more of the excitement was for just our work with Sean Paul. Mm -hmm. For me still. Because Sean Paul them and they, is the standard for me. Mm -hmm. So big up Arsino Hall. People who older than me might be more excited than me about being on that show. But I get it. But the fact say a Sean Paul album and him something there, like that was the real mm -hmm. kicker for me. What what excites you, conscience? No, everything, you know. No. Mm -hmm, everything. Yeah. Everything in a in a in a this thing when you're life. Mm -hmm. Excitement. We just get a new band out here. Congratulations. The excitement. You know what I mean? We we'll get some plaques that come in, we we'll get some singles that added this and added this away. We'll, yeah, we'll try to reinvent yourself to Jamaican people again in you know, this thing we we'll are going on in the TikTok era. And it, it, it's just exciting for me and nice. But somebody like you are supposed to thrive on TikTok because of the catalog that you have. Yeah, but in terms of new music, mm. like it's still a challenge to get our new music, and that is exciting. I seen you do the um, remix to the um, Taliban the other yeah. day. What made you decide? I know you do a lot of remix. Yeah. You you seem to be in love with music. Right. Love, you know. Right. Love, love, love. What made you decide to, hey, you know what? Let me do this. I feel like we're the only genre when I do that. Like mm -hmm. every other genre, um, a big song come out, every other artist endorse it. Mm -hmm. And put them spin on it and it do more for the song, more for the artist. And me do Taliban's remix mm -hmm. too. Chris Brown just the one. Yeah. I don't see no more Jamaican do none. Mm -hmm. But it, it's supposed to, like, I made it do one for Dexter song to one for, um, and it's not about trying to attach, attach, attach on from people. I, because it don't work, it don't work out for me. My thing I would sell is that I got to be free. Yeah. So, you see me do the Dexter one, mm -hmm. and it still never go up on the official Dexter remix. Mm -hmm. Jada King never sang it. I do the remix before it come out. Like, it's just, you need to make the music be fun and, and nice and endorse artists too and, and give credit and say, yo, that song is bad, bad enough. It's so bad mm -hmm. that while me in a studio, I do one, or, you know what I mean? I take time and, yeah. Because of the love of music. You love it, yeah. yeah. Got something, got one more before we get into the festival you're here for. You're in tune with stuff. AI. What's your thought on AI and the music business? I don't know about it. Me hear them use people's voice and, and do some something. I don't really have much info about it and... I feel like I something we feel leave alone for the time being. I would tell you the opposite. If you're not, it's something you should spend at least 40 to 50 to 60 to 100 hours researching and understanding what's going to happen once this comes into play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the, this shift is bigger than the internet itself when it comes to music. And you've seen how music shifted when it came to internet. Well, you see, you don't watch TV, you don't watch movie. Of course. I see AI and I don't know if we ramp it. You stay there. <laughs> go on, but I have enough ammunition still and something I wait. Yeah. Yeah. That's something I go and look upon it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You enjoy AI. If you learn nothing, show me. <laughs> well, well, listen, we'll talk after here, but there's a lot of yeah. stuff going on. All right. You know what I mean? Right now, you're in Toronto. Couple days yeah. before the big show. This Canada Day weekend, all right? Carrie Fest Music Festival. You know who's on it? Yeah. Your good friend, Charlie Black. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yo. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, my dog, man. Hey, watch out. Like, oh, oh, it, oh no, the, 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 the man, them where? Where my, my dog, them, my partner, I would keep this black shadow, them. Them link, man. Say, so, yo, yeah, you, Charlie. So it's like Charlie Black's, I'm a youth. Without me even realizing, I'm a youth, you know. I'm Listen, dog, you guys you know. are inexplicable. Yeah, me never realized. Me, they are Kenya where they yeah. are, have a, one, of, one of the greatest moments in our music for a long while. Mm -hmm. And when I call out Charlie from my show at Kenya, I sit, dance and music, lift up the, the venue in the air. And I say, mm -hmm. yo, just give me a, a great feeling, you know. Yeah. And we do song together. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I, I would say, not so much friends, but we have a strong, strong respect for each other. But you know a point out to me, say it kind of the universe kind of set it that way. They may never really look at it that way. Yeah. Inexplicably, from, I mean, almost from jump. 
Mene walu panitso, but yeah. You have a money song, he has a money song. You have a gyal song, he has a gyal song. And they were never competing, but they just happened directly. to be in the speech. It was never like direct competition, mm-hmm. but they just happened. Um, he have yeah. one of the biggest songs in a dance hall, Party Animal. Mm-hmm. Here comes Broke Off and Max. One of the biggest songs in a dance hall. I mean, international songs. Yeah, yeah me, me get it now, I see it. Yeah, no, I, it's I well. start running back the fire and I see yeah. it. Yeah. So it's you, Charlie Black, another person you've been linking with enough to, Mr. Killer. Yeah. All right. How did that link even come around? I don't know. I mean, just a fan of, of Soka, first of all. I hear your big and, Soka songs. Yeah, and then Monday I stage God for the Caribbean. So when we had, when we had the, when we had the team I showed names to see who I want to represent, mm-hmm. then Monday definitely was the top name. You know what I mean? A Nyla Black man. It's just a girl and I love her voice and I just love her voice and her persona. Mm-hmm. See, and that was before she dropped all the new things in my day. So, you know, so we just genuinely love her, not just for hat. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And there are a few artists that we did try to get and couldn't get. And it worked out, turned into a nice package. Jadel yeah. is a nice upcoming uh, upcoming one, Imani Ray, a nice one. Like, it's just a nice package and we're going to make sure the show, you know, drawn out and you know what I mean? We want to keep the energy party fit. That we want to keep the whole energy. Mm-hmm. Because that's what you bring to the, the table. Right. The party, high energy, high High tempo. energy. Yeah. High energy, no dead air. We want to make sure it's a liquor, easy to get to water, easy to get to food, easy to get to. We want it to come to you, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure it's secure. We just want it to be a nice experience. Yeah. To show them people in, in, in a Toronto so dance hall is still powerful and when it come together with Soka is a beautiful thing. Yeah. When when was the last time you performed in Toronto? I know you were on the, the, the you were on the school tour. Which one? You were the college, the college tour the other tour. day. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. I think it was last year, Jerkfest. Mm-hmm. You were here for Jerkfest. Yeah, two shows back to back. Yeah, they do the Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, crazy. Mm-hmm. What could they expect from you this Sunday, July second, at Carry Music Records? You Reg- see the lineup from mm-hmm. madness, madness, madness from start to finish. Mm-hmm. And we have structured the performances a way we only never see before. So make sure you forward out, get the tickets to them right now. If none left, Zane, just get the mm-hmm. tickets to them right now at Ticket Gateway. And yeah, man, come out, come have a good time. You know what? I got a good one. Give them a medley of some of the hits they could expect to hear from you this Sunday, July 2nd. Hear me now. I can't believe my last week in medley right now to them people. So if you don't know me, I'm turn on the yard here, sir. Yeah, Gala Bubble. Oh, you want me to sing them? Yeah, of course. And you're not, you're not reading my play? A cappella. Gala, that showed so me glad me come out. Gala Bubble. Bubble, Gala Bubble. What this make you feel like, though? We're not right, no for nobody. No boy, what? no bother, than Gala Petos, touch me, not like you. If you can't mash hands, me not. Well, I submit and I submit and I submit and. Do me one thing and I don't follow back, man. Shut my own apart. Most of that boss, you know. All right, see them, man. I'm going to drink Boss, a vibe. I can't wait to actually see you and Charlie on the stage. And I know you guys are going to perform the new song you guys came up with last yeah. year, too. You understand? And then Mr. Killer is going to come in and do his thing. Nally, a black man, mechanic, TID, everybody. It's going to be a proper show Sunday, July 2nd, Toronto, Canada Day. Right. Catch banquet hall, not inside, but outside. outside. Yeah. Of course. We so, can't have conscience here in the summer and we're going no, inside. it's not going to happen. So outside, we're outside. Ladies, come out just how you're supposed yeah. to be dressed. Tugs them, leave all gone at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Conscience. Little fam. I knew this was going to be an epic, open conversation, but this exceeded what I had in mind. Respect. You understand? Thank you for coming through and sitting in the studio and making it happen. Big up. You understand? Got a big up OH, OHS promo, Black Shadow, Omar, all of them for actually making it happen. Big man right here, big up yourself too. You know what I mean? They came through, they made it happen. Conscience in the building, ready to tear down the place Sunday. Make sure you guys get your tickets. Where? Ticket gateway. Don't delay. Yeah. Get it. Get it. Boom. Any shout outs, any big ups, leave some contacts where they could check you out on social media before I get you out. Shout out to all the fans them from day one. Mm-hmm. Shout out to all the new fans them. Shout out to everybody else, be able to scroll past and see this and say, yo, well, watch where I go on. I want to see you all July the 2nd. Check me out on Instagram at conscience, K-O-N-S-H-E-N-S. Enough love. Kandan.
in the building. But, you get it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.